I have a video that somebody recommended me, and it's called COD Zombies, a first-time player's analysis, and it's 90 minutes long. Hey, thank you for the prime chat. Do we give it a watch? I think we could give it a watch, boys. History doesn't repeat itself. It will be very interesting to look at this from a different person's perspective. But ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. It is sometimes easy to forget just how much of an accident it was that we are so used to seeing a zombies mode in our Call of Duty games. That's very true. What a hilariously impossible idea it would have been that we would be gunning down interdimensional undead in a series that previously focused so heavily upon the realism, the idealistic valor of the everyday no, soldier and the very no, literal no. You can only go so far with realism though, gaming. An answer to. How funny would it be to go back in time and show little David OZ some of this footage? He wouldn't believe it's the same series. And the thing is, I'm I not would. even complaining. COD as a franchise has undergone thematic makeover one after another. It has run the gamut of realism to absurdity, serious to self-referential. I have no doubt in my mind that Call of Duty Zombies mode has been an absolutely positive addition to the Call of Duty formula. I agree. Incomprehensibly I agree. weird. Maybe and not so much now, but sure, definitely but in the past. Still positive. Yeah. Most of us know the fiction behind the origins of the undead mode. What was once an off-the-books creative outlet for hardworking developers at Treyarch later became a series staple that would inspire entire graduate degrees in studying its fiction. Zom Milo, we're all looking at you right now. Zombies as a mode is a happy accident. A once-in-a-lifetime instance when a developer's wacky idea was actually listened to and actually implemented. At least as an end-of-campaign easter egg. It was implemented not because of the fiction, the easter eggs, or the characters. Zombies mode was implemented at the end of World at War's campaign because it is actually good. Zombies mode is addictive. Could you imagine, boys? And unique. It's Only good? Zombies mode no deserves way. its praises. And no I am here to way. give them. At it's the risk good? of sounding like a crotchety old 20-something, we have been sort of accustomed to Is having a lot of things spelled out for us in our virtual worlds. Whether it's quest markers or dotted lines on a mini-map, a lot of the crushing self-sufficiency like has been minimized. Too. That's cool. This has conditioned us to a degree, so when developers oh, take the training wheels off, it can feel a bit jarring without waypoints or tooltips. Which is fine, by the way. <laughs> Don't be the person. What is this gameplay? Oh, this is the tutorial of World War II, bro. Look, I love the the, the, the contrast. I W bright as fuck. World War II. You can't literally see a single Subscurity. thing. Obscurity. An authored experience should choose this the level of assistance insanity. it deems important to the experience. Better than Vanguard. Borderlands solo may games. walk and talk you through each step because it deems the looting and shooting most important. And Dark Souls 3 may make getting to Arch Dragon Peak esoteric and difficult because it deems over I've never played a Dark Souls game. Chat, important. should I play Dark Souls? I know that's a Twitch game. I gotta play it, or should I just wait until Elden Ring? I feel like if I play Elden Ring first, then all the Dark Souls games are gonna suck. Neither of those are inherently wrong or bad design, but both look to serve a wider experience. Yep. So I ask you then, you elite group of gamers, where does Call oh, of Duty fall in that spectrum of content accessibility? It's obviously the easier one, right? Because it would be easy to argue that Call of Duty is the antithesis of the Dark Souls side of things. Really? The campaign flows from one set piece to another, never asking much from the player in terms of their own problems. I wouldn't really relate it to Dark Souls, to be honest. I think they're way too different. I think it's an antithesis of multiplayer. That's really what Zombies is. It's instead of facing people, you're facing AI. That's really it. A by design on rails roller coaster. Its multiplayer has maybe the easiest barrier to entry of any competitive multiplayer game, with its rules and statistics easily understandable for most first time players. Heck yeah. Call of Duty is accessible. It's why it's successful. It's <laughs> Vanguard it's be like accessible. Issues. It's why Call of Duty works. Yep. So why then Thank is you, Call of Duty Zombies, of all things, one of the most esoteric, challenging, and complicated gaming experiences I've ever it had? It is very that challenging. It is a series that strives to take the consequence-free and empty-headed joy of a holiday. Like, chat, what, what would you compare even to, like, the BL2 Origins Easter egg in gaming? Where it's that challenging, that complex, especially if you don't look up a guide and try to do it. Good God. 
Like, it's impossible. No other game, I feel like, has some stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Would Blockbuster manage to create gameplay that requires multiple hours of planning, yeah. YouTube videos, yeah. graphs, puzzles, and memorization? Why did I study harder for the Origins Easter Egg quest than I did for 90% of my exams in school? Oh, God, he's speaking directly to my soul right now. He's speaking to <laughs> He's speaking directly to my soul. This is fucking me he's talking about. For those of us that have been playing games for a long time, we all know what it is like to feel stuck. We've all had the thought, how in the world would someone know to do that? A cry to developers everywhere, asking for- Everyone, no, not a cry to developers. This is a cry to Milo and Noah J. <laughs> for clear instructions on how to make this thing do that. That feeling is crucial. To the design of a lot of your favorite zombies maps. I agree. And they somehow make it work. You see, over the last month or so, I've kind of become obsessed with the Call of Duty Zombies mode. It's one of those things Me that for I'm the past six years to say in a video. Like there's some sort of stigma associated with being a complete nerd about the absolutely anarchic storyline and design. There is stigma about being a nerd against COD zombies because I mean it's fucking COD Zombies. Like, <laughs> I like it. It's, I that's all I need to say. multiplayer guy. I bought every Call of Duty when they came out, would instantly Not an the MP pain, gamer. plow through no. that, and then play the multiplayer every single day. Rarely would I even touch the co-op mode. Why would I? I thought, why would I play a joke Zombies mode? Whoa! D colon, man! Zombies was always the mode what I the? played when I was at the depths of my boredom. I didn't what dislike the? it. What the? MP, Andy? I just never got much past opening up the map and Come on, bro. punching my weapon. To me, Zombies was an Easter egg in and of itself. A fun side activity that created some good laughs here and there, but nothing more. Which, and let me be clear for context throughout oh, this let me be clear. retrospective, is truly the origins of the mode itself. It's a mythology that many of you already know, that COD Zombies was created in World at War as a fun little side activity the developers were working on. Hell yeah, brother. Its surprise start after completing the World at War campaign was shocking to say the least, but not so unbelievable or even out of place given the tonal and thematic consistency. I agree. Was Nazi Zombies really out of place? It honestly makes sense when you look at the World at War campaign. One in the chat, if you think it was out of place, two in the chat, if you don't. I'm a tour. I don't even think it's that out of place. I don't even think the BO3 shit, like Shadows of Evil and Garot and Dragons, was out of place. They made it all seem work. Like, they all made it work and made it connect. And that's a sign of a good developer right there, bro. See, I'm a the tour. The entire campaign up until that point. This idea that zombies is such a core part of the COD experience, even in non-Treyarch games, is really a serendipitous result of clever co-op design. It really is. It's yeah, that's exactly accident. what I'm saying. The yeah. spark that ultimately raged into an uncontrollable flame wasn't the story or the Easter eggs. It was a series of clever foundational design decisions that ultimately made for a unique... That is such a great point. I love how he's saying it's not about the Easter egg. It's not even about the gameplay. It's literally about the structure of the maps themselves, which is... That is a point that a lot of people don't take into consideration, but it is without a doubt true, especially when you look at every single zombie's map up to date. And you just look up the the little details. Like, chat, I played Shangri-La 10 times trying to go for round 100. Can't do it. But, bro, every time I play Shang, I notice something different about the map. Like, whether it's just, like, this little bush that looks really beautiful in this one part of the map or this side here. It's literally just the structure of every map, at least up until about BO4 Cold War, I'd say. Be replayable and addicting experience. Because the truth is, COD Zombies is a uniquely delicate and effective cooperative experience. Yeah. Despite being created on the side, it has design principles and mechanics that are unique to the, the side, series, but there's always been dedicated be people in to other create similar it. PvE type content. At least not now. Yes, as stale and ubiquitous as some might say the series has become as a whole, I am willing to say it. COD Zombies mode has genuinely great design. True. Interesting ideas and unique True. It isn't this Thank lightning goodness someone in the bottom end of campaign Easter egg that they just decided to drive into the ground. Yeah. The idea that Zombies mode is at all popular only because of its absurdity and unexpectedness is dismissive of the adept game design on display. Yeah. COD Zombies is genuinely good, and yeah. I want to talk about why. 
My name is David Oz. You can find me in all so the So yeah, chat, this is just places, a man's Twitch streams, Twitter, first analysis on a first time player of COD Zombies on Patreon. From World of War to Thank you, Cold Com, War, I'm Jacob, guessing, Zach not Vanguard. Christopher. You two can and should give me loads of money on Patreon. These videos are tough to make. Alright, let's do it. I've come to the conclusion that there are a number of ways that you could interpret Call of Duty Zombies. Yep. It is a particularly difficult game mode to write about because of how radically different the zombies experience. Yeah, I'd say there's a number of different ways back in the day, but not Vanguard. Vanguard, you can only interpret it one way, which is such an L. That's like how you know Zombies was made incorrectly. Is depending on your commitment to the mode to begin with. Watching an experienced zombies player with mastery of a map is honestly hilariously different from watching. <laughs> no. There are high round players, Easter this egg is players, so sad. casual players, people who know everything about apothecans and ether and doctors and Fuck shadow men. No, baby. And then there are people who laugh when the zombies get flung by the thunder gun. Oh, that's me. There are levels oh, to yeah. the zombies experience. Oh, that's fucking me, bro. That's fucking Even mean. writing for a specific audience is impossible. Maybe you are that person. The person who will write a paragraph in my comments person. explaining no. the differences between the ultimate no, and the crew. No, I'm definitely Maybe not that Maybe you have no person. clue what I just said, and the last Zombies map you played was Transit. Yeah, that's me. One thing that's for me. sure is, I can't summarize. The yep. amount of content being covered in this video is extraordinary, and to try and understand Zombies in completion is impossible. And that's frankly, a great as we will discuss point. later on because it's just so the much of the intended experience yeah it's different for everyone now here i am yeah. mainly covering the treyarch zombies game Exo zombies, and generally when no. i talk about COD zombies as no, a series, no. i really mean the design philosophies no, and rhythms of a treyarch game that being said i will be talking some about the zombies modes in the three other games advanced warfare infinite warfare and world war ii Finally, Dang. I should mention that I completed every map's easter egg that I could, but um, some of them are hard and take multiple players that I couldn't get access to. While I played each of these- He better not have beaten Blood of the Dead. If he beat Blood of the Dead, that's how I know. Maps multiple, multiple times. That's how I know. In order to still be able to experience the process of getting through the quests, I had to get- Yeah, can we get an L in the chat for four I used a Black Ops tricks. 1 quality- Hey, we did this today! Allowed the game to be a bit easier. And crucially for me to be able to do the Easter eggs solo. one mods, a I occasionally would use mods for Black Ops 3 that would allow me to do things solo as well. True as well as just Easter straight up mod. using God mode when I couldn't complete some of the harder ones. Like <laughs> Rock Pro -V. What? Oh my gosh, that map is hard. Damn! True, can relate. Garod Crovey hard. Took me like 10 years to get around 100. This isn't my normal kind of video. This is a video split into two parts. First is my wider understanding and analysis of the game mode of zombies in particular, like you've been hearing so far. And second is a map-by-map -map look at how each experience compares That's to awesome. It's cool to see him go them through them each of the maps. I'm very interested to hear what it should also be noted that last year I played through every single Call of Duty game. Multiplayer, campaign, co-op, everything. Wow. It took hundreds of hours I of my life and culminated in a three and a half hour long campaign YouTube campaign on some of these shit games. And during my odyssey through Activision's Cash Factory, I noticed just how awful I was at the zombies mode. Campaign oh, was easy enough. He I saved had a himself. Lot of basically oh, memorized by oh, now. Never mind. Spec Ops <laughs> is one of my favorite Call of Duty experiences to date. Multiplayer is my true calling. Back in my game Damn. prime, I felt Could like a literal relate. harbinger of death. On maps like Crossfire and COD 4 or Standoff and Black Could Ops 2. Could not relate. But in Zombies, it was like I was trying out a new franchise for the first time. Literally, it's not even the same game. games for almost yeah. two decades now. My confidence quickly falters. Terror sets in. Not of the zombies themselves, but of the looming realization that, wait, maybe, just maybe, I suck at COD again. Sure, <laughs> the mechanics are there. Same aim, yeah, same very true. movement. But that's about where the comparison is. You can't just in. play MP zombies and be good at zombies. Zombies as much on mechanics as it does knowledge and awareness. Oh, yeah. And the mechanics that it does test you on have more to do with movement rather than strict gunplay. Oh, it's Strength all movement. Strength jumping and sliding all in between movement. the slightest windows reminds me less of a super soldier like in multiplayer. Oh, and no more like way. like an NFL running back. Exactly. Cutting between tacklers and looking for just enough space to breathe. Chat, do you ever have dreams about you running through, like, zombies? Not necessarily zombies, but... 
but I have dreams where I'm like basically moving like how I do in COD Zombies, where it's like you're running around either in a circle or you're like cutting back through. It's kind of like a parkour, like sort of like a Mirror's Edge type beat, bro. I get that so much, bro. It's like it's like just ingrained in my brain. Yes. Zombies, when you're in control, makes you feel like an orchestrator of death. Like you are a cattle rancher of 20 years and the zombies are your livestock. <laughs> zombies, when you lose control, can be as stressful a gaming experience I've oh, had. Oh, hell yeah. More often, however, I it know is how a two or three like... second window of profanity that is over in an instant. You can Sometimes. do everything right for 45 minutes, make one mistake in your pathing, and your game is over in five seconds. Yep. Zombies Buried is, is a, a great cruel, example. cruel game mode. Yeah. And that's what makes it addicting. Yep. Each game navigates oh, no. the mode similarly, <laughs> but much like Call of Duty games as a whole. Zoo! This is Zoo! Really this is Zoo, boys! Let's go! Foundational perspective. Oh my gosh. Foundationally, I I many it. mechanics stay the same throughout Finally, the series. Dude, but the priorities the and gameplay. rhythms of a match of zombies varies tremendously from game to game. World at War focuses heavily on tonal objectives, establishing a horror-fueled artistic vision for the series that matches the subject material of the original game. Oh, yeah. Black Ops 1 digs deep into a nostalgic sci-fi aesthetic, with gameplay that chooses to put obstacles in the path of the player as opposed to empowerment. Yep. Black Ops 2 is a roller coaster of quality. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way of describing it. Black Ops 2 is who the fuck knows what's going on right now. Packing in some of the best maps the franchise has to offer right next to some of the worst. Yeah. Exo Zombies started strong but quickly devolved into the least interesting content offering in the series. Yeah, I Black agree Ops with that. 3 manages to take zombies Black to Ops production you... value heights Popped unseen off. before, all the while making a convincing case for one of What's the best content offerings for? in the franchise's oh, history. No. He fish... Infinite he Warfare picked and chose he core dead. foundational elements of the Treyarch formula he and dead. substantiated it with he its dead. own thematic inspirations for what makes a really good game. Oh, no. World War II Zombies saw a zombies era once came and went and black ops 4 such a zombies era no one really wanted oh i did play through true. call of duty black no Cup. one except if you're an avid reddit twitter user so uh you guys got what you wanted it's cold war zombie mode a game title by the way i still find absolutely hilarious but it's hard for me to place it in a wider context of the series right now with such limited experience and time for it to sit i think it's neat i guess one of the most interesting parts of covering zombies, and one Cold of the reasons War I wanted to is, write about it in the first place. I play. think a great game for gameplay, but yeah, I agree. It doesn't really fit in terms of like the narrative that World of War to BL3 or even BL4 was trying to say, I guess. Is how Treyarch essentially created hundreds of jobs for people in the zombies community. Very Treyarch is, with no uncertain terms, responsible for many internet people's careers. YouTubers, guide makers, streamers, you name it. The necessary collaborative element of the game mode allowed for giant personalities to emerge as huge YouTubers. This necessary collaboration is one of the unique elements of COD Zombies as a series. I can't believe and this. And it helps contribute to its mystique and culture. I can't believe this. I An know unspoken consequence of this seemingly good element of Zombies, though, is how it contributes to a commonly monolithic and ubiquitous way of talking about the series critically. Transit is bad. World War II zombies just isn't very good. Infinite Warfare. I I love I love that he's bringing this up because nobody brings this up. In a way, it is like hip hop. It's hypocritical, right? It's like everyone just knows it and they say it, and we all just sort of go about it, even though like maybe for some of you, maybe it's not that bad. But yeah, it's not. It's, it's that bad. It's that bad. It doesn't have the. X factor of Treyarch zombies despite being well designed. Yeah. Opinions more quickly turn to unassailable facts in COD zombies discussions because of how much of the conversation happens on the internet amongst a select few huge voices. Obviously, ubiquity of opinion happens in. I don't actually agree with that. I don't. I don't agree with that. I do not agree with that. That's That puts you under the idea that internet personalities dictate the hive mind. Which I don't agree because it's like, listen, I remember playing BO4 at the pre-reveal event. I actually enjoyed it apart from a couple other things. But then as soon as the world got to see BO4 gameplay, people fucking hated it, right? So it, I don't think that is fully... Internet personalities are definitely not 100% about how the casuals think about the game. 
you find your own experience by playing the game. And it's always been like that. In every franchise fan base, but it is especially worrisome for zombies based on just how much of the conversation happens in the same places online. It's why I hope this acts as an endorsement. It could be a cesspool, but I don't think it dictates the whole. I think I have a unique opportunity to critically speak on this mode as someone who is essentially experiencing it all at once right. in 2021. Oh, that's interesting. So what makes COD Zombies that is worth interesting for me? Why does it get a standalone video amongst the already three and a half hour monstrosity that I uploaded last year? It has to be because of three different reasons. Because of its willingness to be wacky a propensity toward risk-taking, and an honestly breathtaking cultural impact that many people my age can instantly attest to. Yeah. Let's start with the first that, one. Those because are really good points. in a lot of ways, COD Zombies mode stands in contrast to the self-serious schlock that characterizes the campaigns, <laughs> or the strictly competitive utilitarianism of COD's multiplayer. Chat, I remember more zombie map stories than campaign. One of the chat, if you relate to that. Like, I, like chat, I don't remember BL3 campaign for the fucking life of me there's zombies really no at least for a while go. didn't concern itself too much with perfection yeah the maps were often obvious in their experimentation as if you could see the developers laughing to themselves as they layered in mechanics after mechanics that ultimately became series staples you can see this most clearly in the first couple of zombies maps as they evolve upon Nocter and Toten's design in Verruckt. Also, another important point is that, like, everything from Zombies is scrapped, even from World at War. It's, like, either from Campaign or it's reused assets or unused assets. There's a bunch of different ways that they made these maps. So that's another reason why, like, they would repeat the th same things over and over. Percocolas and traps. Yeah. And then continue to add in wacky design decisions in subsequent maps, like the completely unbalanced Wonder Weapon in Shinonuma, or the series True. staple Pack-a-Punch in Duris. Balance has never been a priority for the series. Ah, uh, have you played Black Ops 4? <laughs> no, I, again, I, I agree with this, but I don't know why they nerf shit. So, like, yes, I fully agree with this, but then, like, they started nerfing shit. No more Black Ops 4 gaming. Zombies has a pretty clear meritocracy in how it wants yeah, the games to go. Yeah, Cold War nerfing shit. If you know what you are doing, the game is going to be easier. Yeah. If you know what doors to open and what path, which There's perks always to been a meta. That's very true. Which guns are worthless. Yeah. Then you will always end up having more points and more resources for zombie killing. Yeah. It's in the desperation and the unknown moments of decision making that zombies becomes so difficult. Thank you, Good Zombies you players can basically make a mockery of the mode by weaving in and out of danger with incredible proficiency. There's a whole community of high round players that regularly get to the triple digits of rounds, taking advantage of mechanics and imbalances in the game. COD Zombies is not a balanced That game. was not me at one the point, Wonder Weapons really I promise, make this clear. that was not me at to one me, point. To me, a balanced Wonder Weapon is a wasted Wonder Weapon. When I say I want to be able to turn exactly. zombies into smaller infantile exactly. zombies and then kick them all in a row, I want that. I don't want a balanced version of that. Yeah. And while I do yeah. think the future COD Zombies that's maps do so, excel that's in That's such a ways, great point. There's the early supposed games to be carry a genuinely lovable aspect to the mode in its early stages. And how you can easily see the developers having fun and taking risks with the content. Yeah, it's supposed to be There is a meta-textual element to World at War and Black Ops 1 that basically tells the player, Hey, the developers are having fun here too. Try not to take this too seriously. And the funny thing about the- We're looking at you, reddit.com. We're looking at you, reddit. This is, is it represents night, a sort of microcosm of the macrocosm that is COD Zombies. This is to say that the mode itself is exactly that. A fun chance for the developers to flex their creative muscles without fear of interfering with an established mode like campaign or multiplayer. Yes. The mode started as a fun side project, and that design ethos flows through the mode's veins for years and years. Yeah. It's why so often you will hear such dripping nostalgia for the old days of COD Zombies, the days where the mode wasn't one of the big three of COD modes. Where it wasn't as a staple. Yeah, it wasn't it as like a, a staple, and it could have like been removed at any point, even back well in BO2, BO1. The mode was an outcast, an yeah. Easter egg, a design with the player's fun in mind and nothing else. Yeah. Its heart is what it is. 
If you've ever wondered why exactly people just can't connect with the future zombies modes I did in the complete same the way, e game. or the non-Treyarch zombies games, it's exactly for this reason. If you played zombies from 2008 to 2011, you knew that each new game, each new map, was a complete mystery box in and of itself. Yeah. You had no idea what you yeah, were going exactly. to get, but you knew it would have the potential to be special. There was an unexpectedness to Treyarch's design. A trust that whether or not an idea would work, they were darn well going to at least try. Yeah. I don't know. That's pretty cool. Especially for COD. And the cherry on top of... You wouldn't expect COD to do that, right? That, you wouldn't. Well, most of the mechanics... It is a great point. Like, COD is, good. especially most now, so stuck. vanilla. It's so, so undaring to, to try it. Honestly, so cool that Treyarch introduced perk machines in Verruckt that pretty much stayed the same exact price throughout three more iterations of Zombies yep. games. Yeah. The perk machines themselves were enough of a creative which, triumph, which is almost but to a whole decade. Nail the correct economical impact on the player on their yeah. first go is just so awesome to me. There was real artistry because they, they tried. They, the they play tested the when hell I think out of, of these Cod zombies bro. in totality and its impact on myself and the franchise going forward. It's this. Yeah. Treyarchs, and let's be real, probably blind. Confidence in their design decisions for this mode is its greatest triumph. There yeah, is genuine there's a definite adept game luck, design here, even in and terms a prophetic of their game approach design. to co-op design that they somehow got right again and again on their first attempts. Yeah, they were not immune to failures, but they were lessons that oftentimes informed the rest of the series going forward. That's the most great way. example of that, bro. Lessons were learned, ideas were formed, and the maps, with few exceptions, of course. Tend to improve upon. I would say iteration. not not Signally too much with the non Treyarchs. It's more so the with the Treyarchs, yeah. But I, I think agree. this is especially the case when you look at how the point system has remained relatively unchanged throughout the history oh, of the games, oh. even when you look Black at Ops, Exo Cold Zombies, War, Infinite Warfare, or World War II Zombies. Points, the currency in Zombies, acts as a constant drip feed that essentially informs all of the mechanical progression of the game throughout. Yeah. Many of you watching this will have memories of attempting to get every point available from every zombie in those early rounds. Oh, yeah. Uh, eight shots to the leg. <laughs> the My most memorable time doing this yeah, came in the map bro. Origins, when I was doing run after run after run. Oh, the Origins Eastern. is where it counts, I could do the bro. beginning of the map blindfolded, trying to leech every point possible from the undead as I try and manage staff parts, soul boxes, and challenges. Point management is a huge skill gap in Zombies gameplay, and is instrumental in the addictive nature of the mode. Every single time a player dies, there is an understanding, implicit or explicit, that if they just got off to a better start, the map would have snowballed in their favor more. Warm up games, boys. That's my motto, bro. That's the statement of who I am, bro. So, we try again. Thank goodness you again. Tier one, bro. Unless it's Origins, when I die on the last step of about two and a half hours worth oh, of that, attempt. Oh, no. In that case, I stop playing zombies for about a week because the thought nauseates me. <laughs> so the zombies mode, especially early on, works because of its wacky... Uh, if only you did what I did, chat. Hundreds on every map. yet relatively consistent, and how it's designed with player fun as a priority. I mentioned one other reason, however, and that is its importance to so many people's formative gaming years. Oh, Call of Duty very, Zombies very, was incredibly very, very culturally significant, at least as far as gaming culture goes. Yeah. COD Zombies memes and stories are still flooding unrelated online conversations because for most everyone, Zombies was a ubiquitously shared experience. Oh, yeah. Much like the multiplayer of something like Modern Warfare 2, a good SpongeBob reference, or a quote from The Office, you can basically it's iconic. guarantee that anyone within the age of 21 to 35 has had some sort of experience with yeah. COD Zombies. That's such a it's great a point. It's literally, it was embedded so in the culture. And allure. Yeah. There are so many emotions and nostalgic feelings wrapped up in a discussion about COD I zombies. wish it was like that, but, chat, nowadays. But it's like, you have to think about it, and I've said this before. COD Zombies is like the only form of Zombies content that still gets updated in 2021. And even every year. And it's kind of crazy because it's like, again, I've always said, I don't like Zombies because it's like, the, it's about the Zombies. It's about the adventure within the map chat. One of the chat, you so scared to launch always a game like of Rucked at night like alone. That. 
about dolphin diving down the stairs in Kino der Toten and dying, about making it to round 20 and thinking, well, I had just accomplished something impossible. About some friend saying, yeah, I remember when 30 was the knife every mannequin on Nuketown Zombies, it does something. About the ludicrous things you would hear about the secrets on each map. Yeah. About how you will definitely get the ray gun if you knife the box and spin around three how times. How to get it every time. I remember baby. that feeling of moral superiority you would get when you would open up the door for your friend, but you knew that the next door was more expensive, you manipulative bastard. <laughs> A discussion of zombies is a discussion wrapped full hey, of subjective experiences. Hey, that wasn't me, bro. That wasn't me. That was crawlers, Deji. Of demanding revives because you have the ray gun. It's of meticulous planning for an Easter egg. I can't personally look at the series in its totality and divorce it from my own experience, and I wouldn't expect you to either. Yeah. Cod Zombies is an almost 15-year odyssey. Bruh. And everyone got on That's or off the bus to at say it. times. Yeah, that is All so, you have to do to so realize crazy just how to realize. Much of a monstrosity the Call of Duty Zombies it is mode such a big thing. Is to take a look at the footage from World at War and then immediately look at gameplay from the Pantheon <laughs> map revelation. I know. And that comparison lives a decade of absolute madness. Yeah, that is universe so... universe-bending, time-traveling, It's so intensely madness. different, man. No one, and I mean no one, could have ever expected the sort of chaos that would become of the zombies' fiction. A fiction, yeah, but by it's, the way, I'm so that glad it went tried here, and failed to properly understand and map out in their heads. Yeah. I will not be doing that today. No, if you no, are looking for the low. COD Zombies story explained YouTube video, to this my will leave low. you unsatisfied. To my An attempt low. was made, I won't lie. I watched multiple videos. I read the wiki. I wanted to know the difference between the Rick <laughs> Yeah, and that ain't going to help. I've been there, done that, to interact. Bro. What I do know, however, is that the Zombies storyline can exist both to serve as the plot in a utilitarian way but also it can exist to cultivate an experience in the same way that we mentioned the Easter egg quests can. Yeah. The macro of the story fiction of the universe and, and the micro of the stories well told in each map cultivate each other hand in hand to create a world and a set of characters that tend to be as confused as you are at any given moment. The developers yeah. are very aware of their self-created Yeah, they know that we're fucking Just dumb. how complicated <laughs> it really is. They and know we're fucking dumb. You'll see the them devs know we're stupid the as shit, chat. Ask, why are we doing this again, Rick Toffin? You see, that's why the nonsensical story kind of oh, works. Oh, you whiffed it, L. For the majority of the stories being told in these maps, only one of the characters truly knows what's really going on. That's whereas the others boy, tend Jason to float Bundell. alongside, following... Rick Toffin and later Samuel Stuhlinger both exist as avatars for the more committed Zombies player. They are, AKA in a way, Milo. opportunities for the characters to take on roles that the players do as well. Most Zombies players do not know how to complete Easter eggs or what the implications of the MPD are. Most <laughs> groups of zombies I don't know what that is either, bro. What is the implications of the MPD? As a sort bro. of leader or guide zombies. for completing the quests. Someone has to have the YouTube Who shoots from there? I know. Someone what has spot? to corral the crawler as well. It's basic zombies mode practice. And the developers have uniquely systemized this hierarchy in the characters themselves. Each non-Richtofen character can be characterized by service to something or someone. Tank Dempsey is a soldier, a follower of Yeah, that's of actually very interesting. Rick Toffin's like the only person devoted specifically for the story. It's a genuinely interesting mixing of storytelling and gameplay. Yeah. Takio and Nikolai exist as stereotypically committed to their country's ideologies, as followers of a higher purpose. Only Rick Toffin seems trailblazing in terms of having his own strict motivations and goals. Yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is 75% of the party in the zombies fiction has no clue what is going on. And, and that's me, boys. That's us. Are we the 75%? I think so, Most likely boys. 75% of the I'm Xbox the Live party, or whatever it may be, probably has no clue what is yeah, going on. Yeah, it's very similar to how you play zombies kind of with people. And it pairs well with the ultimate experiential goals of zombies yeah. as a saga. It's usually one, one person carrying all me when I play everyone games else. that have these overly complicated stories is that I try to find common thematic ground amongst all of the narrative baggage. Yeah. For example, Kingdom Hearts began to lose me plot-wise probably midway through the second game. But when I choose Really? 
Damn, you are not ready for the rest of the series then if you stopped at two. <laughs> Just enjoy oh, the game no. through its more affective elements, its feelings on friendship and relationships. I can still enjoy the story being told Some based on experience rather than beats. strict plot understanding. I loved Near Automata. Despite not having JC the Backfire, of the hello. previous titles, JC Backfire, paging it. I was able to just view it through the lens of existentialism. I swear that's JC to be in Nine S's grapple with understanding each other's place in the world. I didn't need to know about Xenohorde or the red-headed <laughs> twins or Yorha because I at least grasped the experience the like, characters oh, were having. Oh no, cursed and image, that was cursed gameplay. Zombies does this through its obliqueness. By understanding and acknowledging how confusing it is, it can create interesting emotionally affective moments in spite of its chaos. For example, the story of zombies does inspire some introspective thought about identity. What makes a person a person? Is it themselves inherently or their yeah. experiences? Yada yada. Hey, could multiple versions of myself be completely different people? Zombies challenges This is why it is sad that Primus Richtofen dies everything. and not Ultimus Richtofen. These are not the same people, despite being, well, Name the, the same, same person. I can understand these moments, despite not, well, understanding them. It is possible, it's and real, even in the case of fiction. zombies, preferable to not understand every plot element and still cultivate an emotional negative experience. Unless you're model. The material is there to get a good understanding, but to just play the maps normally would be to inhabit the very intentional experience of most of the zombie killing party members in these games. It's why you will rarely see me nitpick stories on this channel, especially in regards to I think that's to good because like I've I'm never sure given a up massive hell, like massive shit about the story. That exist so artificially I'm okay with that. But these things I don't concern thing, me when compared to the holistic experience of four unexpected people against yeah man because the story is just extraneous to me maybe i'm just easy to impress i but i, I do agree. know that by the time black ops 3 rolled around and i was playing for hours studying an easter egg just so tank dempsey could kill his alternate dimension self or something <laughs> i knew some part of me was invested in the stories where's the last gen version bro fully understood where's the them. last gen version come on bro yeah, I, I agree, though. That is fully what it is really about. It's not about the gameplay or the, the really story. It's my all gameplay. This way, but I want to look at each That's map in Call of Duty Zombies. Right? This includes the maps found in Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, World War II. She, what we're maps going non Treyarch, boys. Gold. We're going no J4562. Obviously, warrant more discussion than others. That's what I'm saying. But to structure and facilitate discussion about these maps, I'm going to go somewhere that no other YouTuber has ever gone. Interesting. I'm going to make a tier list. <laughs> yes, look, I'm not happy about it either, but I've kind of always wanted oh, to do this. Oh, no. It seems like a good opportunity. So as we go through this video, oh, I'm going to place each no. map into this tier list I found, and then you can yell at me for it. Yes, Got it? Sir. Some of these maps I'm going to yes, blow through sir. and give my rating, and some of them I will substantiate or use as examples for some wider analysis of zombies as a whole. After writing this whole section, it is clear that this is a time for opinionated ranking, uh -oh. not really objective analysis. Shot Monka. I also can't really afford. I'm to so curious to see fully. what so he's going to rank everything a paragraph. by playing everything in 2021. Ultimately, I am not a seasoned zombies player, nor do I consider myself a part of the community. Yeah, this is a zombies outsider's perspective on these maps. That yeah, I that's why I'm very interested to see what, playing what he ranks times each over the last couple of months. I'm sure you will all be completely civil in my comments. Oh yes. World at War, I mean, the chat, we're the most civil community on COD Zombies, with a right? One is shot. Of found I agree. Players started to discover the mode itself. I remember forum posts, That's bus ride broke. conversations, and Xbox Live parties where friends would speculate on glitches, Easter eggs, and strategies. Knockdown Toten, the first Zombies map, would establish design conventions that remain in the mode 13 years later. Right. Doors remain similarly priced. The and you gotta give it credit for that. Price and function. Yeah. And the order of weapons would basically remain consistent on from this underground bunker to the universe bending realm of Agartha. Yeah. The maps had basically zero interest in world building or character development. It was just and instead a wished sandbox. to capitalize upon themes and motifs prevalent in the campaign of World at War. Which I think was the a game great up until way this point was always role. fighting dreamy absurdity with grounded realism. Yeah. It is a contrast that works for the game because of how it positions the player in relationship to war, always in the forefront, 
in the Hollywood dreamlike imagination of war, as if to encourage a healthy skepticism of what is occurring on screen at any Also, time. chat, I think what works with Nocturne Toten is that it came out at a time where Nocturne Toten was hella scary. Like, it was literally, like, I remember when I was a kid getting, like, nightmares about this game mode. Because I was just like, bro, this was way too scary. Right. You know what I'm saying? It is a contrast. It came out at a work perfect for every time. Which is why it, it's almost like a nightmare. Juxtaposing the you know? grittiness of the actions to You're the heroics trapped. of the moment. But it mostly works in World at War. It works in tandem with the stories told in the campaign because of how it positions the incoming horde as a very real consequence of the German army. Yeah. It's why it works so well as a It's literally system. like a nightmare. An arrival yeah. of undead German soldiers is not totally unbelievable within the fiction of the story told over the last eight hours. Obviously, nobody could have known what would become of the zombies or their origins, but in 2008, it made total tonal sense as a secret ending to an already difficult to believe in video game. World at War, and this is true of Black Ops, and it's real so, as well. A lot of it in the campaign is real, literal face which is value. so cool. In terms of that's design, what makes a great the map goes on to give man. a couple opportunities for player choice and clever play, but is, as you can all imagine, the most simple map on offer. Questions like whether you should open the mystery box door early for a weapon advantage or opening the stairs for a every tactical decision advantage counts, man. Memorable it's just like real life morality. Most of the joy here is in its tonal accomplishments. That's right. Nocturne and Toten can really only be objectively ranked as completely serviceable, if a little dull. Yes. But subjectively ranked much higher given the fact that Good. the genesis of the thank, of this video. Thank God he doesn't rate it badly, chat. That's what I'd love to see. It's not a bad ranking. Has been gushing about. This it's true. You can't rate Nox badly, man. Well, Verrucked, which aims to access a horror element to its presentation that we won't really see again until Black He's Ops been Three's straight map. Facts, That's a one I, I agree. Verrucked is, I think, the second most successful zombies map on offer in World at War. Ooh, Thematically, can it establishes relate, a clear relate. goal of spookiness, Even a goal like that is accomplished through rounds. audio design more than anything. If you were somehow brave enough to have no issues with playing the first map alone, then this one would test you more so than any other going forward. Oh, yeah. Vrucht exists, first and foremost, to place the player in a position of dread. Oh, yeah. Players know that you're not <laughs> That's in a nutshell. Alive, and so the developers Literal take craziness. that into account with the design of the map. You will see this change as we get further into the series, where the maps that empower the player tend to take on more fantastical and absurdist elements, yeah. whereas the maps that are meant to be tonal pieces tend to take on much more dramatic levels of self-seriousness. That is a very some interesting reason, I point, think and I guess that's why you see harder maps in World of War and be a one. With these zombies maps than most games I play. And even There's something like very II. authorial about zombies maps, as if you can see the decisions and conversations that would have been happening playing out in the map itself. I think Verrucked is a good example of this event in a couple of ways, the main being how it uses progression to combat against the feelings of dread. Yeah, Verrucked added the first the map splits the players up in the amount of progression in two zombies different rooms with disconnected from each other until yeah. the power can be turned on. Yeah. Turning the power on would obviously become a staple of the series going forward. With the level design quirk well, of not starting even separated, map, and then the machine, addition no of purple power. machines and better walking, <laughs> the further you get into the map, the design oh, of the map no. encourages progression. That, that word, map, progression, down. is going to be one of the most important through lines of how we understand the level design of COD Zombies going forward. In each map, the designers tend to take advantage of a pretty consistent upward trajectory of player power, starting with basically nothing, a pistol and 500 points, and working oneself oh, up to that's a super where Cold War fucked things up for this everyone. Trajectory is no really more the core addictive quality of the experience. Chat. Knowing that at any Sash. moment you are a double points or two hundred points away from a significant power boost, Verrucked does well to establish this curve through its mechanics, starting you out with complete dread. Oh, he dunskies! He dunskies! Verrucked is a special Sash. map tonally, an interesting map mechanically, and a vanguard of popular series mechanics going forward. In my opinion, Verrucked is a great zombies map. Shinonuma wishes to apply wow, some put it all the way up in great. the mechanic um, that's shocking. so as to, I think, increase opportunities for replayability and adaptability. Shino is literally a high round map. That's it isn't unfair only the reason for me to why say that zombies can become a little boring after a while. 
Oh, I am yeah. no zombies god. I have played every single map released, and let me tell you, some of them are boring. Shino Numa, despite introducing boring. the randomness Sad. of the perk no, spawns, you gotta go for high round. Is absolutely bro. boring. No. Many of you know, however, that this map is special insofar that it is well completely broken. Yes, only spawning in a completely manageable amount of zombies at 24. a time. Twenty-four. Making high rounds on this map trivially easy. Yes, sir. This is widely considered the easiest zombies map of all time, but most of I my agree. memories of yeah, it come it down to disappointment. Yeah. Shino Numa is a bad zombie. Wow! Map. However, this map did introduce characters that Listen, as a casual, I get it. You have to be a high round player to enjoy Shino Numa, but I agree. That is the casual opinion of Shino Numa. It is. It's the casual opinion. I can't deny it. Iconic That's figures true. in the franchise going forward. Tank, Takio, Nikolai, and Richtofen. A cabal of racial yeah, stereotypes. Yeah, F in the chat for Krups. At this Krups point, is fucking only existed crying right for now. the flavor text and comic relief, but would go on to multiply, expand, deepen, and most importantly, genuinely emotionally connect with zombies. But it fans. did start the story. Humble beginnings even it for was these a four, but here boring, they are in all their embarrassing right? muck and mire. Yeah. Some of you in my YouTube comments may be shocked to hear I am not really going to expand too much on how dirty Treyarch does characters like Takio and Nikolai in their early iterations. Oh, obviously. Yes, it's pretty Ten bad years stereotyping. Ago. Ten no, years ago, it's oh nothing God. unexpected. Call of Duty's cultural transgressions have always been a sort of scorched earth philosophy, making yeah. it hard to pin down on something like Takio's speech when someone like Nikolai is a vodka guzzling stereotype himself. Yeah, These yeah, it's so hard to be like are unapologetic jokes. It's so hard to Comic be angry relief at to that, contribute in to my the opinion. hooky indifference. I feel like you're kind of a fiction. dumb human being if you There's are. no specificity to the racism, no analysis yeah. to be made about the message other than stupid joke is stupid for stupid sake. Yeah. That being said, it wouldn't That's be much point. longer before the fiction and its characters started getting a little more love. Darice is where love that can be found in the fourth and best map of the first game, Darice. Of course, this map everybody does a lot Darice. of things right. Everybody loves a lot Darice, of man. things. Best it establishes long-term goals I for the see player this in outside S of just on his casual playlist. It introduces some mechanical non-linearity and how you can choose the order of teleporters you wish to link. Most importantly, however, it changes the entire curve that we mentioned earlier. One of the main appeals to zombies can basically be condensed into one mechanic, Pack-a-Punch. Oh, yeah. To me, Pack-a-Punch is at the heart changes, of the Changes the entire experience. series, bro. It, it is the, the fulcrum biggest, in which the rest of the experience rests change. upon. I know it Thank seems like a minor mechanic to insinuate that it is the most important mechanic, but I really feel this way. Yeah. Pack-a-Punch is emblematic of the entire ethos of zombies, which is why and goals. A mechanical it, finish line so, that players aspire you know, to. It's so weird that there's no pack I mean, cam on Vanguard, I just think it's example. brilliant. Yeah. It is some real game design goodness. Some just, mwah, some clever thinking to address most issues with the zombies formula as it stood prior to Darius. Yep. Pack-a-punch is why I think that Treyarch's designers here have somehow gone completely ignored when we talk about great game designers in pretentious games design circles. The mm. carrot on the stick of powering up individual weapons into unique you put and Shino Numa new weapons bad, but as a so casual, I get it. Every casual hates Shino Numa. I needed Every to know all the different does. iterations of weapons. And let me tell you, when I found out you could pack a punch the starter pistol into the Mustang and Sally, my God, why, I thought. Why would my you ever hang nodded. on to that crappy weapon for my so man long? Nodded. But suddenly, in that moment, possibilities erupted. What else could happen? Why wouldn't yeah. I at least try once to pack a punch each weapon? Exactly. The replayability of the game skyrocketed for me. Yeah. And the entire structure of decision making going forward was changed. And then they added that with zombies like five was no bajillion longer other about games, aimless bro. survival, but of a very specific objective. Yeah. Darius excels in a lot of ways in terms of design, but its lasting legacy will always be the decision that acted as a turning point for COD Zombies as a mode. Pack a punch as a mechanic took a he mode from fun developer bro. Easter egg to genuine franchise staple. Darius is a classic masterpiece of. That's what I'm game. saying. Every that's World the best War casual is ranking a good I've ever seen. Game, and that one is I am happy the best casual adopted. ranking. I agree. It's a time capsule of the mode that is just not it present. It is really in the, the best casual forward. ranking because I feel like every casual is thinks the same way. more charming than it is uninteresting. Anyone who has played the more recent zombie games knows just how out of control the map design and objectives have become. As fun as I had creating and upgrading the four staves on Origins, I would staves. not blame anyone for having a serious preference toward the survival-driven focus of World at War Zombies. I will remember World at War Zombies more for its authorship and developer-added charm, as well as the game's tonal accomplishments. 
I can confidently say that the best of I had to, it, like he takes such an interesting down, point on it because not everyone is like this. Everyone's like, Black Ops yeah, 1, and more specifically, bad. Kino Der Toten. Now I know that COD Zombies has a long-running community, a community of decade-long fans well, who have DLC calcified and debated certain opinions over that same decade. I know that Kino Der Toten is a fan favorite. It's an all-time classic. Kino Der Toten is as standard and average of a zombies map as you it can is remember. average as a lot so of people alone, have tried it. I don't love it much. Dang. So let me be very Monka clear about this before we D analyze colon. it. Kino is a good zombies role. map. It is absolutely sufficient. In fact, Kino Der Toten can act as a framework for basically understanding the map design philosophy of COD zombies going forward. It's a great way to and start. While I COD, personally don't like opinion. it for being so formulaic. The formula exists for a reason. It works. Yep. I've thought about this a lot, and I've arrived at this. COD Zombies map design basically follows a formula that resembles Morse code more than anything else. Really? Dot, dash, dot, dash. The dots are what you would call points of interest. The dashes are what I will call kill zones, oh, which are in no uncertain terms designed to kill you. Yeah. Which, by the way, is no more clear than when you look at it. That's an interesting way of looking at zombies. it. The dot dash dot design to its most unfortunately condensed. Yeah, there's version. like main hubs Think and about then there's tunnels the way to the main hubs. You between dots, its yeah. rooms, its points of interest. Yeah. Narrow funneled corridors that encourage moments That's of That's a very interesting being point. Cornered between the devils you know. That's and really shadows of evil, bro. Devils on the That's other all side. the maps. Yeah. I imagine if there were an available heat map of zombie players' deaths. You would see devastating amounts of failures in these dashes, in oh, the metal yeah. staircases outside of the theater room, yeah. in the doorway next to Double Tap, in the tiny closets headed towards Speed. Yeah, door. as a casual, yes, Open but as a high round player, East Ray player, could be different. Could be different. Them. Yeah. So if we understand that traditional Treyarch map design, especially early on, follows this rule of sequentially opened and closed areas. Then how do yeah. they connect to each other? There's the dash, and then there's the dot. It's a, it's well, a really usually, it, weird way of thinking about it, but it's actually ways. true. Either in the form of a rectangle or in the form of a bicycle wheel. Now, I know this is getting a little abstract, but it is important to understand how each map differs from one another and how I think, most importantly, how the maps who deviate from this structure deviate. Kino Der Toten is undeniably in the shot. rectangle map design box, Deviation along with maps games. like Verrucked, Origins, and Revelations, as well as others. The player starts at one point of the rectangle and can navigate its perimeters by choosing either left or right, usually with the middle point being some sort of powerful area, like the theater stage. Many maps choose to connect these areas through novel ideas like teleporters or zip lines, but the structure remains true. Crafting a map like this is as utilitarian as game design can be. I agree. It's not something you can easily play do. Through a designed yeah. experience. It's not easy. This is why the dot dash dot form. Which is, is why so you're seeing Vanguard and Cold War struggle with maps. Dashes like, that are mechanical it's not easy to make these maps, bro. The Especially when they're so the awesome. Kino is almost certainly the most obvious example of this, besides yeah. some egregious examples in Advanced Warfare. I tend to, maybe <laughs> unfairly, think that this bruh. is uninspired design, at least when I compare it to designs that I think are masterful, like the vertically inspired labyrinths of Mob of the Dead or yeah. the heliocentric rotations of Shadows of Evil. Yeah. When new game designers first try level design, oftentimes what occurs is a sprawling, flat series of sequential rooms. One after right. another, rooms enter in and, and that's out of something each other that zombies as well. Way. Elevation now, is I, of course, really am no a level good designer, point. so I have no belief yeah. I could do better. But I do tend to prefer the levels that are less longitudinal and more latitudinal. Like, you want you know, elevation, right? which is why I, I love call, like the dead, down, right? call the dead, chat. Call the dead. Call the dead. Levels call are designed the dead. this way because they you better work. Better call the dead high if you're saying works. some shit like that. But that's it for me. So Kino it's earns literally its serviceable the map. rating from old days. Serviceable, sure. And I have similar feelings for the that. game's extra vanilla map, five. five. I love the acting performances here. Everyone rates Kino and Five the exact characters. same. Zombies so does I'm, well to I'm go the same, goofy I'm a here, much like the stronger chat. maps from Infinity Bill Ward's Infinite lovers. Warfare Zombies mode. Five is hilarious, frustrating, difficult, short-lived, and most importantly, goofy. Hardest I imagine fuck, it is not neighbor. as liked by the fans as Kino Der Toten, but in the event I launch some Black Ops and have a choice yeah. between the two maps, 
I think nowadays. But I don't I think casuals would hate this map. It is a much know? more concise, interesting, and to the point experience. Yeah. With that, I think it gets put just ahead of Kino in the serviceable tier. Fair. I appreciate the Same. ways in which Trails sticks five to is willingness better than to Kino. be goofy. Fair. And I think that is an important hallmark of the series that I will be mentioning frequently throughout my map by map I analysis. I agree. Gamer. The maps I love tend to be the same maps that have characters outside of the normal crew. And I think that is no coincidence. It's Zombies almost is, as all, if living... they should have just done that and not tried to make an entire overarching storyline between every single map, but rather make every map a new and different experience. It's almost as if they should have done that for Cold War, but they just kept fucking doing it. And I hope they don't do it for Vanguard, but they're going to do it for Vanguard, which is stupid. On house money. It's stupid. It was never meant to exist in the way it does. It exists because of experimentation. Yeah. Easter eggs and quest objectives are a significant part of the zombies formula as we see it now, but it wasn't always that way. Up until this point, maps Easter eggs were basically fun activities to do on the side with no but real now they're like significance the main quest. or crazy yeah. amount of preparation. It's like work. a part of the content. For whatever reason, Ascension, the first DLC map of Black Ops 1, introduced the start of how we begin to understand COD zombies Easter eggs going forward. Yeah. Essentially this was, was the, the start. first map I installed my Black Ops 1 Reimagined mod on, and it helped me accomplish the Easter egg for this map. The Reimagined mod is There are hilarious sick, clips chat. from my stream of me lamenting the fact that the Easter egg was so complicated and difficult. <laughs> How would anyone know to do this? I questioned. Little did I... Literally just play this game for an entire month of your life. Ask Liam Winter Live, bro. Liam Winter Live, I was baby. playing Baby's first Easter egg. To be clear, Ascension is a fine map. The perks stealing monkeys are annoying, but I understand Just the design decision to compare the map to Five and Kino der Toten. Treyarch was clearly looking for ways to impede the player, as many players were discovering just how easily manipulated the undead horde was. Yes, Here's sir. an interesting lens to view the rest of the maps from here on out. How does Treyarch disempower its players with fun? Ooh. Let me explain. Each map does this better or worse like with than the Easter another. Egg? I will try and mention them from here on out. But examples of disempowerment that immediately come to mind are the item stealing monkeys, the rotating excavator oh, on the moon, I George guess. on Call of the Dead, the yeah. infection and EMP zombies on exo uh, zombies, I just think they're or the challenges plethora of that boss zombies need. that are found on the later maps. Oh, These yeah. mechanics have to walk a very thin line between being tedious and being too and then easy. Actually, each map useful. fails and succeeds yeah. with its hard, in different man. ways. Liam I think the steps. Can I get F in the chat for Liam? Because Liam's I bad. like Ascension. I think it is a great zombies map bad. with a simple map design that has memorable power positions. Good the landing pad next to PhD. Flyer. Dang, even in great. I the agree. Next map the would be an interesting great. departure oh, from the thematics of the zombies mode. You up better until not. This point. You better Choosing not. to have real Hollywood you actors play the not. roles of the four playable characters. You Call better of the not. Dead would also star a hero of zombies lore himself, on, George Call Romero. Come I'm just going to say Call it now. Dead. Call of the Dead is my favorite map in all of Black Ops 1. It might just be my second favorite map of all time. What a roller coaster. Same here. Same here. It's literally my second favorite map of all time. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? That's kind of crazy. Poster of intersecting That's kind of crazy. Interesting story and deep It's almost as if we think the same way. I love playing this map. It is the ultimate addicting zombies experience. Yes, so far bro. that if and yes. when I die, I tend to yes. always know what I could have done better and how to fix it. Yes. Call of the Dead rides a balance of difficulty and fun that the series is pretty much constantly arguing with itself on how to reach. Yes, I actually don't know how this map is received he by the community. Sees the vision. I think it is probably <laughs> received well because, well, I think vision. it's good. But in the event that it is, Call that is I think one of the best casual maps map, ever. More That's so why I love it, because I'm a casual at heart. Required oneself to fail many times before the map made sense. Yeah. I've probably played this map more times than any other, besides Origins, I guess. True. Because it took so long for me to finally say, I got it. True. It wasn't until I was able to complete the Easter egg on my own two times that I thought I fully got the analytical yes. experience I wanted from it. Dude, this is what I'm saying, man. One of the saying, best parts man. of its design is the placement of its weapons and perks. 
giving just the right space between yeah it's power. not bad like, it also does the whole there are two paths like, in the spawn no room way. choose wisely thing a lot better than any other map in the franchise yeah i agree most maps have a clear better option and oftentimes maps either put upgrades and power too close to one call another, that it's hard to like tell which one you want to go buried or too in a way you kind of want to go like to in both the case sides of transit if it helps illustrate my point, I think two other great examples of this sort of perfect perk and power pacing can be found in the map's origins and shadows of evil. Yeah, I agree. Finally, with that as well. I think this is when I started to kind of get addicted to going for Easter eggs. Yeah, the quest on this map was yeah, so fun to me, yes! so challenging, and so unexpected. A call of the dead lover. It was so unexpected. How could I hate this video sensical. now? I actually kind of knew what was going on because exactly. of how simple the requests were. Call it. I don't know. I miss that. Especially after playing through Black Ops 4. <laughs> Call of the Dead earns a masterful rating from old days. Okay, man, this video is getting kind of long. I'm going to probably speed some oh of these up. Oh my gosh, Lightning round. yes. Shangri-La carries forward the series of yes. Easter eggs in Black Ops Fucking 4 with love another Call really interesting, although pretty frustrating, self-contained story. I like this map a lot, but find its corridors and map design genuinely dull. What with its grid-like outdoors and cavernous indoors, basically resulting in play happening in rectangle core. I don't think Shangri-La was fully realized to what the devs wanted it. That's why a lot of people, I don't think, liked it enough. But man, it was still an incredible map. Of course, for a good portion of the map. I mentioned earlier how good the Wonder Weapon is here, and it's just true. It is the ultimate fun Wonder Weapon. Yep. F Thunder weapon. Thunder weapon. Dang, I'm gonna go that's ahead a and say is a good. good COD Zombies map. Dang, this is a great list. I don't really like Moon a whole lot, though. I I know. Same. I get the feeling this is going to be controversial, but at the same time, I'm not I a big a Moon fan. That's why I think it's good, but I don't think it's great. Have little to do with the map design. This guy's on the same the wavelength as I am. It's actually game. ridiculous. Remember when we talked about how he? I can't. I, I actually can't map. believe this. It's like he's reading my mind of cleverly disempowering a player in a fun way that oscillation between i hate the space the man on the and world. allowing the and the excavators yeah that's why it hurts gameplay it's at the core of the addictive properties of the game yeah i often think moon takes us a little too far into the realm of tedium though yes but that's just for me that's my experience yes because like hacking the excavators originally. every five the rounds is boring as fuck something different to everyone else yeah for me, I find the story significance, the Easter egg, and the overall production value of this map certainly interesting and unique amongst the maps until this point. But ultimately, my zombies experience is an experience of about 15 to 25 rounds of mistake making, survival. <laughs> mistake really making. That's what he's talking about me. Going for the Easter egg on this map, however, I will say was my first holy crap moment of making. Of this course, video. of course. I certainly knew that COD Zombies got much of more course. insane. And that's why I think people love story. And you can't rate it but badly. Seeing it all happen one step at a time was an instantly unique experience. Yeah. In any other video game context, the hilariously janky arrival of a young girl with a teddy bear floating above the pyramid would be considered so amateurish, poorly. Animated. so but so zombies, right it was man. a revelation it was so exciting for me to finally see the girl they've mentioned it is so much so it very interesting that that that's the, at the way it is. so much work for this moment that because really it could have been either really fucked up or really cool and gladly so in that sense gratefully it was really cool conflicted with moon even still after making this video yeah i'm gonna go ahead and put good. it good good but I wouldn't argue with anyone if they had it higher. This is a great video! As far as not arguing with people... So far, chat, his rankings are literally perfect. I can't believe it, but his rankings are literally perfect. One in the chat, if you agree. Based on I can't believe it. His rankings I are perfect. I definitely would not argue it's with insanity. anyone who has Black Ops 1 as the I best fully agree with all of his rankings. game of all time. I think my choice will actually surprise some, and it isn't this game. Interesting. But I, do think I this love may be the, the most one, consistently great COD. Yes, game that's also much. what I agree with. It's the most Here consistent, out, both narratively and mechanically, but also from a meta perspective of COD Zombies yeah. as an idea. There it is, is easily no the most consistent. Back. Yeah. After Black Ops One, after the destruction after of the Earth, Earth, little would remain the same about how no we view back. a single match of zombies. Yeah. Going forward, Zombies was to be held up right next to Campaign and Multiplayer, a yeah. franchise staple to be taken it became seriously a pillar. amongst its peers. Yeah, to that be is also not very just true. a map, but a mode. A whole mode, yeah. What happened, of course, <laughs> was an uncharacteristic failure of Treyarch to deliver on a new experience they so oh, desperately wanted. Oh, good lord. Transit is, in no uncertain terms... I love how he just went straight to the point. Transit's just hot fucking garbage. A bad, bad <laughs> Zombies map. 
The common mythology around transit is that it was too ambitious. That's to so time, funny. It tried to be something. I that love the that. Generation I love that. He just doesn't even have to freedom. explain it. It's just hot it fucking makes me garbage. Wonder then, how is a map like Origins even possible? I mean, I look know, at this. right? It is shocking to me that transit came out in the same game as. Maps it's like almost this. as if it was made by a different person. <laughs> Origins or Mob of the Dead, and I'm not. Hey, but I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think Zelensky and Blundell might be the same person. Visually and functional, fun functionally, Mob of the Dead might as well have come out in a different console generation than Transit. Let's not be exactly confused because I yeah. know already that Transit is considered. It's crazy to think that it's on the same consensus. game. Even I cannot come up with some contrarian take on Transit to spin it as a good addition to the Zombies canon. Transit is frustrating. It's poorly optimized, it's uninteresting, and lacks any sort of clever design yeah. that helps wash down the boring moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. And that's kind of a shame, really, right? As many of you know, this map was really a failure of a wider vision of what Zombies was I hate that be. this is the map as well that everyone knows, because we were so excited for BL2 after the moon blew up, and then this is what we got. I would say, though, that there is a positive spin. I oh, can't do it's this. it's so foul. If there is one, it would be that the reaction to Transit was a reaction clamoring for less. Less experimentation, as if the world was screaming... Look, Treyarch, you have something here. Don't mess with it. And after Transit, Treyarch knew what to do. Make good experiences and contained maps that follow the formula that got them there in the first place. What Treyarch will do for the next, I don't know, 10 maps is basically the best stretch of maps. It's crazy, yeah. Like, they, like, Transit was the hardest L they ever took, and they said, fuck it. We're going to go banger after banger after banger after banger. And that was hot. Honestly, it turned me the fuck on to the COD Zombie storyline. Chad, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm a Zombies YouTuber. I was about to quit Zombies after Die Rise. Mother of the Dead turned my fucking 13-year-old cock right the fuck on. And I never stopped. Can I get a drink in the chat for that? Is in my opinion. Starting with Die Rise, which is honestly just good. I've always liked this map because of how different it is. And especially the mechanic of the falling elevator in the spawn room leading to one of two of the buildings. I think this map Dye is cleverly sucks. designed with I the Wonder Weapon that falls into my design. I only like the Wonder Weapon. Yeah. Fun over function. I don't have much more to say because we're already so high on time, but this map is good. I like it a lot. Johnny J's in a room somewhere going fucking ballistic right now. Damn. I would put at least Die Rise in serviceable. But good? This is my first disagreement. Higher than Shang? No Mega Wolf. Johnny J's going fucking insane. <laughs> Johnny J's going. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I forgot Nuketown Zombies. Oh. <laughs> uh, everybody. Chad, doesn't everybody forget Nuketown Zombies? I swear to fuck, nobody remembers this shit. I never remember this map. I almost always forget it when I rank maps, bro. It's just such a shit map, it's bro. It's not very good. It's all right. Yeah. The random perk spawns are bad. I hate, I hate. Newtown's one of my least forward. favorite maps ever. Bad map, but leaning towards serviceable. Sure, sure. Mob of the Dead is, in no uncertain terms, the best zombies map in the franchise. Oh, yeah. yeah. Its ability to inspire feelings of It's got to be one of the best, bro. Really. Through its atmosphere it's got to be one of the best. inspiring when you compare it to the fact that the gameplay gives you opportunities to break through that dread and power through with interesting mechanical ideas. The story and the characters on display... I think every casual loves Bob because it's so easy as well. And the Afterlife system helped out so many people play this map more. It just perfectly with the rhythms you know? of Zombies gameplay. To me, this is the culmination of the mechanical and narrative lessons the franchise has been learning to this point. If only Finally every other Cold War map or every Cold War map was shouldn't like this. be reinvented, but yeah. celebrated and emphasized. Exactly. The story does this Not by going reinvented from Black Ops 4 Omega Wolf. The gameplay does it by going from aimlessness to mastery, and the thematics do this by going from horror to power. Yeah. Progression, remember a word we mentioned many times before? Might just be is at its perfect best on this map. In Exactly. The progression of its characters, exactly. of the scope exactly. of the map, of your power, and specifically of your own knowledge of the map secrets. Yeah. Learning this map over time was one of my best memories of this entire video. 
Dang. This map was so enjoyable because of how achievable it was. Yeah. And how believable it was that my character. Yeah, like casuals can do the whole Easter egg, bro. Which is great. That's so and that's awesome. That's my to lasting do. impression of COD Zombies. Which is, is which is why I think Cold War is also one of the best selling COD games of all time. Because literally, chat, any casual player can do any of the Cold War Easter eggs, right? One in the chat if you believe so. I think so. Even Mauer. Bro, I think a lot of casuals can do Mauer, you know? When the story and its That's why I think it works so well. harmony with the experience of myself as a player in the game. In the interest of time, we're going to have to move on, but I love Master Dead. Master Yeah. And it takes this Has top to the spot best. on my tier list. Has to be the best. Yeah. Let's move on to the next map real quick, Buried. It's pretty good, but ultimately Buried's boring good. to me and easier what? than most. I don't revisit this map much when I'm playing through it. Oh, but I think it's still as a solo casual. I totally understand that. Buried is way better for player casual. You cannot have like there's so much fun that is restricted when you're playing this solo, in my opinion. So in that regard, I actually can't agree. Good in it is a co-op map Buried for is sure. A low good map. Yeah. And finally, I get that from a solo perspective. To be honest, you need to have a co-op standpoint for this map to be great. I definitely think I could make an entire video about the next map, Origins. Oh, it is such an you can make an entire YouTube channel. It's called the Smith Place. Fast <laughs> enlargement of what we understand as the COD zombie structure. Oh man! Everything you knew about what a match of zombies could entail really changed after this map's release. And for better or for worse, the series doesn't really ever recover from the release of Origins. I have insane uh, feelings about this map. I don't agree with that. I, do you think, Chad, that Origins was the peak and nothing ever competed with it? I don't think so, man. I think BL3 competed with it. You know, I don't fully agree with that statement. I really do see it as an achievement and probably the second best zombies map of the bunch. Interesting. But my God, is it sobering when I look at it as an indelible turning point in the franchise. It's literally like a campaign I've played Origins mission. That's why it works so map. well. By yeah. a large margin. Yeah. I spent so long going for this Easter egg. I spent two hours straight on the step where you have to throw the airstrike thingy <laughs> in the floor. Fuck that step. I rerolled the beginning bro. of this map so many times. I have nightmares about brains <laughs> and jars, shovels, souls, souls, <laughs> and empty forties. Origins is no. So he fucking good. whiffed. <laughs> so good. He whiffed. But I can't help but feel like did another one, bro. He whiffed. Oh, Narratively, so this is also when things begin to truly go off the rails. As it introduces a lot of the timey wimey stuff into the front of the oh, storyline yeah. of zombies. Yeah. Anything after this basically is beyond me, truthfully. And I just try to follow along as best as I can. In terms of design, in terms I of storyline, I can agree. But in terms of perfect. gameplay, no. It is optimal, understandable, and the disempowering mechanics we've mentioned so often actually do ride the line of fun challenge pretty effectively. The progression curve of a game of Origins is probably as dramatic as any map in the franchise. As by far no, the hardest part of the game the of Origins is the first 30 minutes or so. Oh yeah, I agree. If you can get past that much, once you, you get jugged, you're basically chosen. and perks, you are a genuine unstoppable force of oh, nature. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And that is precisely what makes Origins so Once you get a staff, a once you get jugged, you can just break out of your mortal shell. Yeah. You will always have a chance in a game of Origins. The first 30 minutes the is the hardest shot. I agree. Out of any other zombies map, it's fucking it's hard, hard. But yeah. rewarding. Yeah. And that is why I basically played Origins exclusively for a week straight. Or, uh, and ultimately, Origins like five is years. a masterful map. Yeah. And I do love it. It has but you to have to understand world. that it also represents a sea change in the philosophy and objectives of COD Zombies going 100%. forward. 100%. Toward narrative science fiction experiences that place the... Yeah, that, that was essentially the guide for the BL3. And they always do that. The last them. Zombies map of every game almost dictates the entire rest of the next game. You can see that with BL3, with Revelations, with BL4. You can see that with... Okay, maybe not with Togger Tone, but you can see that with <laughs> you can see that with Origins, and you can see that with Moon. Oh, to this point, you may or may not like it, but Call of Duty Zombies after Origins had arrived. Yeah, it is a mode, and a not mode Forsaken either. Forsaken and um, Togger the it two outliers. It ties a real bow on what is, in fact, my favorite COD Zombies game. Wow. And the one I will revisit most after making this video. Chat is BL2 your favorite COD Zombies game? Everyone always says they like BL2 Zombies over BL1. Vanguard, get the fuck out of here. A lot of people really love BL2, but I I can't do BL2 for. Before me. we will see the real results of oh, that sea change, God. though. 
we should first briefly stop by Sledgehammer and look at Exo Zombies. Oh, good God. I'm going to be real with you. Exo Zombies was the least amount of fun I had while recording this video. Yep. And I Weapons had to record suck. basically every day over the Weapon course of around 90 balancing days. balancing is so important. I won't stay long, but Exo Zombies tends to encourage the things I like the least of the zombies experience. Specifically, the uninspired map design that runs the dot dash dot structure into the ground. Very A true. A good example of how opposite Exo Zombies is to my preferences is the way they handle pack a punch, choosing to make it more incremental and less expensive yeah. rather than a. Every game, you notice, every game that has this system sucks. BO4 sucks for that. Uh, the only game that did it right, in my opinion, was Cold War. Sudden power. Even Vanguard sucks with it. Now, of course, I understand the philosophy I hate Vanguard it, system giving with it. short bursts of power that substantiate over time into significant increases. Cold War was but the just only like I game that did it right, I think the opinion. climax of Pack-A-Punch is instrumental to its significance in the franchise. For a lot of players, Pack-A-Punch is the quest. Pack-A-Punch is yeah. the final Fuck boss. This step. Everything Fuck after that is just survival step. and fun. And to take that away from the player is to never give them the catharsis of overcoming the dread of the lowly beginnings of a zombies game. Overall, however, Exo Zombies places tedium on far too high of a pedestal, completely missing the point of how carefully Treyarch attempts to yeah. balance and power Sledgehammer games versus Disney. Chat, listen, I love Sledgehammer, but I don't think they should continue developing COD Zombies, to be honest. I know Treyarch developed Vanguard, but it's like, it's based off of the Sledgehammer game mechanics, and it just doesn't work. It Exo doesn't Zombies work. is constantly trying to disempower you. Yeah, Admittedly, it doesn't work. because of the Exosuit's power, but the point still remains. Exo Zombies developers start you just like the Treyarch developers do, with some points and a pistol. They ask you to go open doors and have some fun, just like Treyarch. Yeah. I opened every door in Advanced Warfare, did every Easter egg. I'm still looking for the fun. True. Oh, okay. I forgot I have to put them on the tier list. Did um, you hear that, Noj456? Did you hear that, bro? Outbreak is okay. Best of the bunch, probably. Infection is honestly god awful. Yes. Carrier is awful. Descent is. Ah, carrier is okay. Are, are oh my sure god. Noj, please watch this video. Can someone please tell Noj456 to watch this video? Noah J456 needs to watch this video. Advanced Warfare didn't come up with the Marauder fight before Doom Eternal came up with the Marauder fight, by the way. Now let's talk Black Ops 3, and more specifically, Shadows of Evil. Chat, before we talk BL3, I, I have to take literally the biggest shit ever. Uh, chat, honestly, uh, my my stomach's about to die, so I gotta end this stream in like 20 minutes, chat. Okay, let's fucking get into this, boys. Zombies. So just bear with me as you get a bit of a unfiltered look into my mind when I've been gaming for a long time. Imagine this scenario. Chat, I am can we get a caca emote in the chat? Big Before I knew caca. anything about Three, Black two, Ops one, Zombies, two, Call of Duty, boys. anything. Three, two, I'm one, on a desert two, island, two. and Treyarch is holding me against my will in a bunker with a TV and a console. <laughs> They're feeding me just enough through a tube for me to survive. Who's fucking through making this? Voices, they tell me Who's making this narrative? We've created on Shadows of Evil, and we will let you go. Guys, do I have poo-poo on my hands? I am not certain. I don't I have any poo-poo. I wash it. You can literally again. see. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could figure it out. Genuinely, if I played 21 hours a day. The sheer amount of guesswork... No, I would never be able to figure out the Shadows of Evil Easter egg by myself. There would be no way. I haven't seen it, but I can guess that there are hours upon hours of holding F on Chat, plants, take a smell. Do they smell like poo, poo Shooting weapons at bricks One or chat. planks of wood. Big single throwing bingle. grenades in curious places. Big single bingle. Spinning around three times, looking up, then down, and firing your gun in the air. They don't smell like caca. Oh my birthday. gosh. That's gaming, Shout out to the chat. folks that managed to figure this stuff out. A lot of my zombies experience had me alt-tabbing to a guide every five minutes. Also, now, obviously, I can tell he's a casual player when he doesn't realize half the steps, even on Shadows, were data mined. So F in the chat for that. All of this being said, I love Shadows of Evil's Easter egg, and I love its characters and map design. It's just absolutely It is criminal. a masterpiece, in my it opinion. It is masterpiece, It remains yeah. the most enjoyable I don't know how you could give Shadows less, man. It is such a beautiful map. And Duraizen Drak is another excellent map. One that builds upon That's what I'm saying. I would still give it a masterful rating, to be honest. basically find all the way back on a map. Chat, D.E. or deck. Shadows? Concise areas you tell me, boys, that layer upon themselves in interesting ways, giving lots of I think they're both equal, bro. They are both incredible. Area. 
Derizendrox Easter egg is less fun for me. Like I but said, chat, four horsemen of the apocalypse. Of uh, uh, or four horsemen of COD so zombies apocalypse. Right kind of wholesome and memorable. Yeah. We see this a little bit in Zetsubo no Shima as I well. I wonder what he's going to give but Zetsubo. Instead of narratively, we see it thematically and artistically. Zetsubo is a good map insofar that it positions the player in the same relationship to Dread that we saw all the way back in a map like Verrucht. Interesting. Horror, dread, hopelessness, fear, it all makes a return in this map. Yeah, and I for agree. For that, I appreciate it, besides it not being one of my favorites mechanically. Zetsubo is good. Not Interesting. excellent, but a very good zombie. I would map. give it, I gave it a good Verrucht. on my Pro rating, v, so you know what I'm saying. My least favorite map in Black Ops 3 unfortunately finds itself in a weird middle ground. What did he just say? Garod Kovi, my least favorite map of Black Ops 3? Whoa, hold up now. Hold up. Replay that shit. Not excellent, but a very good Replay that shit. Replay that shit. Garod Krovi, my least favorite map in Black Ops 3. This is criminal. Unfortunately finds itself in a weird middle ground. How? A little too much in a little too many places. It's thematically opposite of the previous map, with its what? dragons and mech warriors, but it also is just a bit too heavy on the obsessively convoluted zombies mechanics that so many players have had such issues with up until this point. It is maps like Gorod Krovi and generally Zetsubo and definitely Revelations that I find myself longing for the simplicity of the older games like Black Ops 1. Two th this, this map is literally Black Ops 1 type map. I don't even understand that, bro. Things can be true at once. Black Ops 3 can be a very good zombies title, maybe even the best, but it can also be far too insistent on its own self, insistent on cultivating replayability through complexity, and insistent on explaining every gosh darn piece of fiction. I don't feel like GK does that, bro. Uh, L plus fell off, plus Grog Krovy best map, plus uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. That someone jokingly put into a game 10 years ago. Take There's Nikolai's no way. vodka, for example. What was once a stereotype must now be an explained thing. Everything in zombies has to be a thing. It has to have meaning, has to exist. That's a Blundell thing, though, let's be real. It's to meaningfully in a wider context. Nothing can just be a mystery anymore. Yeah, that's a Blundell thing, though. maps over time got so concerned with the who's and the what's and the wins, it lost yeah, sight why of are the, the graphics why. so weird? The reason the mode was interesting in the first place. Its insistence on explaining itself devalues and amateurizes an otherwise perfectly I can't, utilitarian I can't example agree. of I'm just so curious to where he see where he puts it. This is especially true of Gorod Krovi and Revelation. Man, I seriously Maps cannot I just relate. don't see myself being interested in revisiting. Seriously cannot relate. I will give Gorod Krovi a low serviceable rating, but remember, that's my opinion. It is below Outbreak Exo Zombies. Chat, is this man as bad as Noah J456? This is incriminating. It's becoming clear that at this point in Black Ops 3, wow. Zombies is teetering on a fulcrum of identity shit. that it just doesn't know how to resolve. Do you wrap up this story, and more importantly, this era, or do you continue to ram the same cycles into the ground forever? We will find that as the zombie... You know what? He he wasn't there for the three-month wait between Zetsmo and GK, where like fans were starving for GK, man. So I feel like that's also what made GK better, plus Z House, plus Ratio, plus Fell Off, plus L, plus Copium. As these maps go forward, the games become more self-referential and desiring of a past self. That's a very this, great course, point. Yeah, they all come back rather than move However, forward. However, there's a consistent through line of self-acknowledgement before and after Revelations that can either be charming or distracting, depending on your cynicism. Yeah. In Revelations, it just isn't a good map in my opinion. I find it dull. It's and not so very interesting because GK and but Rev were the two maps more suitable towards sense. the. Um, I find it sad that this was towards the, the community at the time. After so I, so I, I can, I can agree with that. These stories and as a new casual, you must be like, "What the fuck is going all, on?" I felt the mode took a step back with the release of this map. Yeah. And the answer to that question and that's from kind earlier, of what will we wrap up the story and more importantly this era, or do you continue to ram the same cycle into the ground forever? The answer was definitive. Yeah. We continue with what works. Exactly. Despite its rust and repetition. Exactly. I don't like Revelations because it is a linear dot dash dot structure that treads upon old ground and manages to somehow shrink it in size every time I play it. Yeah. To the point I find myself fighting in the same places every time I play the map. 
that is an issue I neglected to mention in zombies in general, but it's really a problem, especially. Yeah, Revelations people. does start it. That's but a really good point. Special, like it does though, start the downfall, good, just downfall special of BO4. Is the ways in which but Revelations I do like ties Rise, together a decade's worth of Easter egg progression. Yeah. There is something so addicting and alluring about Rev the Easter is egg an, and is an addicting map and regardless. I think I've begun to pin down exactly why they work for so many people. And how they managed to enrapture the mode in such a way that it became integral to the experience. In short, it feels like you are doing something wrong. It, it flopped from like the hype. Yeah, the also game. it had immense expectations from be. the end of the it game. It is, bro. for me at least, a mechanical taboo. Yeah. Of course, the brilliant irony of this feeling of Yeah, and from someone that wasn't in the community that the at the time, I, it makes it sense why you wouldn't like way. Rev. The designers yeah. of the maps have made it so they've convinced my subconscious that I am in control. That yeah, I am so getting true. underneath the skin of the traditional zombies experience and unearthing something hidden beneath. Yeah. It really is amazing, and it is a shame so few have actually done them. Yeah. But as my time with this video nears a close, I think I will always remember the production of this video as the Easter egg months. That's what drove me through these maps. Interesting. That's what made me say, these are so ridiculous, so incomprehensibly dumb. It so is also like BL3 design. is Easter egg it's awesome. I gotta make right? a video. Yeah. And so for that, I Revelations that. is kind of a neat little reminder of just how that. absurd these games are. Are you gonna watch Spider Man after this? Quests. No, we're gonna do it another and it day. It kind of makes me giggle to play through Revelations, then remember how complicated I thought the Easter egg on Ascension was. I thought it was a joke that people actually did these for fun when I played Ascension for the first time. I thought there was no way they could get more complicated. They did, Chat. and I'm glad for it. I think I'm going to end this pre video prematurely just because, like, I feel like total shit. So, chat, thank you, boys, for coming out to this stream. It's been an absolute pleasure, chat. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow. I just got to I just gotta head up. So, chat, it was a great video. Go check it out. David OZ, incredible, awesome video, boys. 